Hello. <laughs> With such a glowing uh, presentation, uh, I hope I can measure up to it or you might want your money back and uh, <laughs> we'll go and complain to them. Okay, what we are going to talk about is uh, iTechpreneurship, creating chaos to avoid chaos. Now you might wonder what the hell does Cameron know about chaos? Well, my name in Japanese is pronounced Kamiron, not Kamron or Cameron, Kamiron. And Kami is God or creator, Ron is chaos. So I am the creator of chaos. Any problem you have, blame it on me. I'm the cause of that. So my life has had uh, four portions. The first 25 years, uh, I was an entrepreneur. He was very kind, talked about my successes. I started 10 companies, but not all of them were successful. Three of them failed. I got fired twice. Any of you have been fired before? Okay, so you know how it feels. It's not good to be fired, but Thank God, seven of them, actually six of them were successful. One of them is still a zombie. We don't know what will happen. Of the six, uh, three of them were acquired. Three of them were IPOs. The IPOs were all multi-billion dollar unicorns. So that was first part of my life. Second part, I had a global uh, venture capital fund, 350 million. We invested in US, Japan, China, India, Israel, and Singapore. I stopped investing about four years ago. Uh, the third part of my life started about 21 years ago. By the way, these, some of these were parallel. I'm not 200 years old or whatever. <laughs> Maybe some of you think I am, but no. <laughs> And uh, 21 years ago, my wife and I decided to give all of our money to our foundation uh, to go and uh, try to reverse a lot of bad things that we saw were happening because of the wars, because of the problems. Uh, two generations in my family were refugees and two generations in her family were refugees. So we thought we have a much better use of our money uh, than going and buying homes or corporate jets or all of that crap. So you don't really need any of them. Flying uh, commercial airlines is extremely good. You make a lot of friends and you only need one home. <laughs> uh, you can use Airbnb for anything else. <laughs> I can tell you, you know, it's really stupid to have uh, lots of homes and vacation homes. Anyway, so what we did with that money, we, our first big project was called Schools Online. We started in 1996. Between 1996 and 2003, we worked in 36 countries and uh, in 6,400 schools. We would uh, donate computers. We would set up computer labs. We would pay for uh, high-speed internet that was available at that time uh, to come to the schools and we also trained tens of thousands of teachers on how to uh, use internet, learn about ICT and learn about uh, high technology. The, this project became quite big in 2003. We started to also go and work in refugee camps, try to use technology to create jobs in different parts of the world. And by 2009, our organization had 2,000 employees in 25 countries and our annual budget was $45 million. That was when the uh, United Nations asked me to go and uh, become co-chair of UN Gate, United Nations Global Alliance for Use of ICT in Development. Uh, UN had this uh, Millennium Development Goals, which were due 2015. They were looking how to use technology to bring these goals to reality. And uh, about uh, four years ago, we decided that uh, the world is going to change. Uh, my wife is a smart one in our family. She went to Stanford and studied alternative energy 
She came and told me, get your head into this. Uh, the price of solar is going to come down so much, the world is going to change. And we started to look into the positive side is we can hopefully save our planet. The negative side is many governments whose main budget is uh, coming from sale of oil and gas or coal are going to collapse and have major economic problems. So that's what uh, we have been doing. And currently, that's my big uh, part. As part of that, I'm uh, involved with many different organizations that you see in here, and it will become a bit more obvious uh, why I'm doing all of those things. So, first of all, iTechpreneurship. This is a term that uh, is combination of high-tech entrepreneurship with the little i, which is broadband. And why is it important is when you use broadband and the power of the cloud, you can do things much easier, much more efficiently. Uh, my first company, just to get a prototype ready from my idea, I needed to raise $1.8 million. Now imagine you're two, 26 years old in 1980, right after hostage crisis and uh, all the problems between Iran and US trying to go and raise $1.8 million. It uh, took nine months and uh, I almost went bankrupt there. But today, because of the cloud, because of that little I, you can start the same type of company for less than $50,000. And that is really key because it's the first time in the evolution of our species that young men and women, all of you in this room, can use your brains and the power of the broadband internet to go and generate jobs, generate wealth, without the blessing of the older generation. That's a very, very key thing. So if we do this right, we actually have a chance to transfer the wealth from the hands of a few, that top 1%, who are typically older men, to the hands of hundreds of millions of people who are young, very creative, like you guys in here. And with transfer of wealth and distribution of that comes transfer of power for the better. So that's a kind of high level thing. Now, I will just spend a, a minute on this. Any task that you can do in your life, you can do it by hand, you can use mechanical, tools, you can use electromechanical, microelectronics, software, or content. The higher you go up, the more value you create, and the higher is your productivity. Let's say if I wanted to reproduce what is in here, I could sit down and draw it, and maybe after a whole day, I could get $5 for my drawing if I'm lucky. If uh, I use a mechanical camera, I would have to send it to be processed. Maybe the picture is good or not, but it's a little bit faster. Electromechanical cameras had the little button you push would take 10 pictures in one minute, so one of them had a chance to be good. With the digital camera, microelectronics, you could use the LCD and make sure it looks good. If you use the software, you could go and add a lot of filters, fix a lot of the problems. But the best way is to go and look at who else in social media has taken a picture in this room, at what time, from what angle, go and use some advanced technology, patch them all together, create a 360 degree 3D picture in here, and many people would be interested to see that, especially if you add the data of every person who was here in the last five years and took different pictures from different angles. And that's the power of data. That's the power of data analysis, conquering big data. So anything you are doing in your life, 
is going to be affected by this. And the job of an entrepreneur is to figure out when we are going from what stage to what in which field and take advantage of that and go and create wealth. Okay, easy. Now, as time goes by, this pyramid, more and more things are gonna get done by software, by content, by robots, by artificial intelligence, and eventually it will be an inverted pyramid. Very few things we will do by hand, by mechanical things. Majority of the things would be touch of the buttons and a lot of automation will do that for us. Now, what's the mega trend? As I said, in 2013, we noticed that the world is going to change. Late 2014, the price of oil started to drop and the belief that I, my wife, and many members of scientific community have is that the price of oil is going to go to zero. Now you could argue whether it's in 15 years, in 20 years, 30 years, but it's not going to be 50. Soon it will be zero. So some stupid people could come and say, let's go and bring coal back, like our stupid president, or in America, or you can say, we are going to go and do something to Star Wars, start, you know, more conflict to jack up the price of oil. These things are not sustainable. Sooner or later, you will have a few bumps up, but the trend is going to go to zero. So, we did this study in 2013. This is the list of the top 30 countries which were affected by this. And this was the list of top 30 countries that were affected by the drop of price of gas. If you combine them together, many of them are repetition, there is about 45 countries which you have to worry about. Now, if you took out the ones in the Americas, in North America, South America, and if you took out the ones in Europe, 38 of them are in Southeast Asia, Central Asia, Middle East, North Africa, and Central Africa. 38 of them. Now, another interesting fact. 32 of them are Muslim majority countries. Why is that important? Every one of these countries have a large population of young people. And every one of them already has started to have very high unemployment rate, some of them above 60% for the young people. You can take whatever the government of any country reports, add another 10, 20% on top of it, because in developing countries, everything is seniority based. People hold on to their jobs. When the jobs become few, the young people, like yourself, when they get out of school, don't have jobs. Now, in Islamic countries, if you don't have a job, you don't get a wife if you are a young man. Why? Because the father of the bride has to approve the marriage. And no job, no wife. The father will not approve it. In addition, in a religious country, no wife, no sex outside marriage. Huge, huge problem for both boys and girls. And in here, or in many other Western countries, 
If you don't have a boyfriend, you don't have a girlfriend, you don't have a wife, you don't have a husband, you go to the clubs, you drink a little bit, you jump up and down, you burn energy. Not in Islamic countries. Many of them, no music, no alcohol. So imagine if you are a young man, what happens to you? All your energy, the hormones, everything you have is just pressuring you. And there are about 30 organizations that come and chase you. These are terrorist organizations. And they say, you want a job? We give you training, we give you a job. They say, you want a wife? We have all these women who also need a husband. We will line them up for you. They would love to marry a warrior. And they say, fight for us when we establish our country. We will help you have your own home, your own land, everything. And if you died in the next world, we give you many more virgins. Wives. Very tempting, right? Now, let's look at what has happened in global terrorist activity. This is the data that we gather. The blue is overall activity. The red is Islamic-related activity. It used to be around 300 or so per year to 300 per year. All of a sudden, in 2014, the price of oil and gas and coal drop, unemployment goes up, and you see it shoots up four times more. This is the number of terrorist accidents that happen, and as you can see, 1,448 of them in 2016. Jumped up from only being 200, 146, 200. Jumps up. Now, you might say, how come we didn't hear about it? Because we only hear or pay attention when it happens in America, when it happens in Spain, when it happens in Germany, in France. On a monthly basis, you can see how it started to jump up right around January of 2016. And we only see or hear 2% of it that happens in Europe or in US. When it happens in Bangladesh, in Pakistan, in Azerbaijan, in Nigeria, in Gabon, in Sudan, who cares? And we have this stupid belief that there is a war between Islam and the West. That's pure bullshit. If you look at who is committing this, these are the top terrorist organizations according to listing of United States government, these two, Kurdistan Workers Party and Hamas, call themselves freedom fighters and political activists. So you have to eliminate them. The rest of them are all Wahhabis or Salafis, a very small percentage of all the Muslims out there. And these guys kill all the other Muslims. And also, every now and then, they kill a Jew or kill a Christian or a Buddhist. So it's very important to understand what the problem is. And when we have a stupid president who says, I'm going to go and bomb the hell out of them and start more wars, this is all wrong. The more of them you kill for wrong reasons, 
The more children you kill, the more terrorists you make. Now, what's the answer? Lots of young people in these countries and lots of great brains. Why am I here talking with you? We can do something about it. What can we do? We need to help them go from oil, gas economy, fossil-based economy, to innovation economy, using their brains and using that little eye to become eye tech pruners to create jobs for themselves. Because their stupid government typically is incapable of creating jobs because it's run by old men who do not have the slightest idea what to do. All they see is, oh my God, Amazon comes and all the stores close down and Uber comes and all the taxi companies go bankrupt. They don't understand what is happening and how the world is changing and how they need to change. So that's why we created a project called I Amina. Amina is Asia, Middle East, North Africa. And our goal is to create 10 million innovation jobs in the next 10 years. And you say, God damn, how could that be possible? I might appear to you like I might be high or on drugs or something, but those of you who might know me, any one of the projects, any one of my companies, anything we did, at the beginning, it looked crazy. But that's how you have to be to go and do something which really changes the world. Now, how do we do that? First, you need to inspire 50 million young people in those countries. Say, hey, you are not a victim. You can do something. And Maybe create some viral videos of any of you who have started a company who has been successful. Say, hey, I was like you. If I could do it, you can do it too. Think about it. You guys can do those. You are good at making videos. 30 second, one minute videos. Inspire them. Not everybody is meant to be an entrepreneur. The statistics are less than 5%. I take 2% of these people you inspire, come up with an idea. We know majority of ideas are dime a dozen, don't go anywhere. Say half of them disappear, people don't follow it. Half of them come up with a company that they register. These guys, we need a program to go and give them money, small money. They don't need a million dollars. They're just young. They need $5,000, $10,000, $20,000. How can you go and do that in a massive scale? Sounds impossible. I'll show you what we are doing. Again, half of them are going to fail. But those who have real product, real customers, we need to give them big money. A few hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars, two million dollars, help them grow and create many more jobs. And finally, again, majority of these are gonna fail. We end up with 100,000, each one of them employ 100 people, quite doable. That's how you create 10 million innovation jobs across those 32 countries. Absolutely doable. Just is all of us working together. Startup Grind is an amazing organization. It spreads these kinds of things everywhere. So does Startup Weekend. So does Seed Stars. 500 startups. That's why I go to any of these events. I give talks. I try to promote this. Because these guys are all doing amazing work. And we all need to support them. Now, what do we need to teach them? Three things. I take prunership. 
how to invest in itechpreneurship, the basics of angel investing, venture capital, create a lot of itech investors, because there's a lot of money there. People invested in real estate, invested in old technologies. And we need to teach them social itechpreneurship and positive impact because we don't want them to use their brains to create an internet gambling site. That is purpose is to separate people from their money so they could make money. We don't want them to go and become hackers that separate you by, from your money by coming up with some viruses, some uh, blackmail virus that they give you that you have to pay them up, or the ones who steal your credit cards, your bank accounts, and take your money away. We need to teach that you could do good and make a lot of money. Like Google, put all the knowledge of the world in the hands of everyone for free and is worth gazillions of dollars. Like Apple, like eBay, like PayPal, so many of them. You can do good and make a lot of money. So, how is that possible? You have to top down, talk to governments, advise them. You have to go and help them change their public policy. You have to help them change their tax laws, their bankruptcy laws. And that's why I created Global Innovation Catalyst to advise the governments. We are currently advising six governments. and. Six months ago, I met the president of World Bank, and I started to go and advise World Bank in both Middle East and in Africa. They have $19 billion a year budget for Africa, and very little of that has gone to high tech. I'm helping them change that. Now, Work with Stanford, UC Berkeley, Harvard Space University here, UC Berkeley Law School, and we help create an innovation ecosystem in each one of these countries. And bottom up, we need viral videos, we need to show role models, we need to show an ecosystem map that I will tell you what we are doing working with Stanford to create five-minute video series. You will see it will be announced January, February of next year. All the knowledge Stanford has in how to create companies, how to invest there, we are putting it into five-minute videos that you take a class for five minutes and take a quiz. You pass it, you go and take the next one. And we want to offer this at affordable prices, which is not what Stanford has done in the past. So I'm doing a lot of wrestling and arm wrestling and making progress. We need more and more investments in those areas, bigger investments, and hopefully generate new role models. These are the groups that I'm working with. And this is an example of EcoMap that shows you if you're an entrepreneur, where are the nearest ecosystems, where are the nearest entrepreneurial associations, where are the nearest VCs, angel funds. And this is what I have proposed to World Bank. In each one of the countries, create a $20 million fund that goes and invests as a fund of fund into 10 micro funds, each one of them 2 million. And each one of those funds trains three fund managers. So in each country, you create 30 fund managers. And each fund invests $20,000 on average in 100 companies. So you can create 1,000 startups and if they take, create jobs for five to 10 people, you have created 
5,000 to 10,000 jobs per year. Only with 20 million per country. Remember again, for Africa, World Bank has a budget of $19 billion a year. This is a tiny drop to put it in there. So I'm making progress. They're listening, they want my help. I'm showing them how these things could be done. And people like startup grind. By having these kinds of things, educating. People like 500 startups by coming to these countries, educating people, getting them connected with you guys who are a lot more advanced. And I'm working with some of you on creating free mentoring that you can decide which entrepreneur from which part of the world you want to mentor for a couple hours a week. We are creating something like Tinder for mentors. You want a quick mentoring? You get a five minute mentoring at no cost. Hopefully by beginning of next year we can announce that. So these are the organizations we are working with. And basically I'm a great believer that the best way to predict the future is to create it. And we are all in this thing together. If we take care of those countries, create jobs over there, teach them high-tech entrepreneurship, they will be successful. If we don't, more and more refugees, more and more wars, and those refugees are gonna leave at some point because the parents decide our country is not safe. We cannot afford to see our children go and get blown up because some stupid terrorist organization is gonna kill them. So, join me, love you all, and thanks for listening. Take good care. <laughs>